morning and welcome morning. to an online event brought to you by Parkinson's Community Los Angeles. Today, we are going to hear about the Alexander Technique and how it can be beneficial for people with Parkinson's. I am Angela Neff and I serve on PCLA's Board of Directors. For those of you who don't know us, we are a nonprofit that supports families living with Parkinson's disease through free events like this, support groups, meetings, and more. Today's Let's Talk Parkinson's program is brought to you by our generous sponsors, Abbott, Boston Scientific, Kiowa Kirin, and Supernus, and by donations from the Parkinson's community. If you appreciate what we do, please make a donation on our website at www.pc la.org. Thank you so much. And just a few quick notes before we get started. We are recording today's event for YouTube, but you will only be visible in the recording if you are speaking. Please stay muted to keep the background noise at a minimum. And after the presentation, there will be lots of time for questions. You can submit them through the chat. Please join me in welcoming our speakers today. Shula Sandowski and Julie Shelton are both AMSAT certified Alexander Technique teachers who are also trained in adapting the technique for people with Parkinson's and their care partners. Julie piloted the Parkinson's Alexander Technique at the Henry Mayo Newhall Hospital Educational Center and teaches the techniques at Cal Arts University and to private clients. Shula has been teaching the technique for more than two decades, including work in the Calabasas Senior Center, the National Holistic Institute, and the Cancer Support Community. Julie and Shula have worked with the Parkinson's community at the Northridge Medical Center. On April 18th, they are starting a two-week class on the technique at Felicia Mahoud Multipurpose Center, West LA, which they will tell us more about. Please join me and welcoming our presenters, Shula and Julie. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am Shula, and both Julie and me want to thank Angela for introducing us. We also want to thank PCLA for inviting us to do this presentation. And special thanks to you, everybody who is here right now with us on Zoom, willing to learn something new, being open to new learning this time on the Alexander Technique and how it can benefit people with Parkinson's. We are going to start with a short animation video, but before even doing this, take a moment for yourself. Give yourself a time to make yourself comfortable. Let the back of the chair support you if you're sitting on a chair, just let it support you from the back. And let the floor support you from underneath your feet. And just remember all the space around you, in front of you, behind you, above you, and all the oxygen in this space, in this air, available for your lungs to breathe. And here, Julie will guide you in a one minute relaxation for your hands. Here she goes. Thank you, Shula. Hi, everyone. My name is Julie. Nice to see everyone here today. So as you're sitting comfortably and in a balanced way, let's choose to bring up our hands and keep our fingers open as you can without tightening them. And this will prevent curling, which sometimes happens in Parkinson's with our fingers. So bring your hands together, if you would, please. Okay, we're thinking of lengthening fingers, fingertips releasing away. And now we're going to come to our shoulders, thinking easy shoulders, soft shoulders, soft elbows, and easy wrist. 
Allow those wrists to be nice and easy as our fingertips float away. Great. Now we're gonna turn our hands down on something that they can rest on. It could either be your lap or it could even be a table or a smooth surface. And we're gonna consciously flatten them out without any tension. Thinking easy shoulders, easy elbows, easy wrist, and easy fingers. Again, letting go, letting go. Release a new breath. Beautiful. And now we're gonna share with you an Alexander animation video. The Alexander Technique is an educational method for changing long-standing habits of tension. Research suggests it results in improved movement, balance, and overall well-being. Findings from three randomized control trials show long-term benefits for people with chronic back pain, chronic neck pain, and those living with Parkinson's disease. Through the Alexander Technique, people learn to recognize and change harmful postural habits. Sessions include simple activities such as standing and sitting, lying down or walking, and more complex activities such as learning a musical instrument or sports. But how does it work? Recently, scientists developed a model which proposes changes to postural tone and body schema underlie many of the reported benefits of the Alexander Technique. Postural tone is the ongoing muscular activity that supports us against gravity and other forces. Without it, our bodies would collapse. The researchers propose that the Alexander Technique improves people's ability to prevent everyday habits disturbing the balance of postural tone. Evidence suggests the Alexander Technique results in postural tone becoming more adaptable and distributed differently so that activity shifts from surface to deeper muscles. They also propose the Alexander Technique fine-tunes the body schema, which is the brain's map of one's body parts in space. Postural tone and body schema are deeply intertwined and improvements in one can lead to improvements in the other. By empowering people to better attend to these aspects of themselves, the researchers suggest that the Alexander Technique results in the beneficial effects it's known for today. Improved movement and balance, reduced pain and enhanced overall well-being. So in today's presentation, we're going to look at a few things. First of all, a little bit more about what the Alexander Technique is. We'll look at benefits of the Alexander Technique, and we'll also look at three video demonstrations of individuals living with Parkinson's who've applied the Alexander Technique to their daily activities. And as you've already experienced, we'll be having Alexander mini movement and breathing exercises throughout our presentation today. What is the Alexander Technique? It is an educational approach to functional patterns of movement in everyday activities. It involves changing patterns of postural support, muscle tension, movement, attention, and reactivity. It prevents harmful muscular and postural habits and introduces healthier ones. It enhances freedom of movement, head poise, trunk mobility, and stability. It addresses the whole body rather than the parts. It is practiced and applied in daily life. It is not an exercise program and it does not come instead of exercises, physical therapy instructions, or any other Parkinson's program. It was developed in the first half of the 20th century by F.M. Alexander. I would like to clarify just for a moment the point of harmful patterns in daily movement. What does it mean? What is daily movement? Anything is daily movement. If I sit at the chair uh, in front of my computer, 
this is daily movement. Now, what can be harmful about my sitting? Well, the tension and the contraction and the co-contraction in the body during the sitting, uh, this pattern of tension, pattern of, of contraction can be harmful. So what will be an example of a harmful pattern? Let's say when I sit at the computer and look up at the screen, uh, my neck contracts and my head goes out of balance. This is considered a harmful pattern. And why is that? Because in this specific pattern of the contraction of the neck together with the head going out of balance, in this specific pattern, the, 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 there is a compression which is created uh, in the spine. So uh, the, 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 the vertebrae along the, along the neck uh, get compressed. And uh, this includes the spinal cord, all the nerves in that area. This uh, leads to lack of mobility. It leads to discomfort and it can lead to pain. Now, what can be done about it? According to the Alexander Technique, we can change this pattern and learn an, a healthier pattern. In the healthier pattern, the neck will be free of tension, the head will go back to balance, and this is what we call head poise. And uh, here, Julie will share with us a picture. There is a picture. So now if you look at the uh, top uh, um, picture on the left, you see the contraction of the neck. You can see the, the contraction in the spinal cord. And you can see that the head is going really out of balance. The back of the head is kind of falling backwards and downwards, right? And if when you move on to the picture on the corner on the right side, um, down, yeah, you see how the neck is free, how the vertebrae are well balanced one on top of the other, and how the head is well balanced on the top. The head is in a good head poise. So, what do Alexander teachers do? Alexander teachers guide people they work with. We guide them both verbally and also with gentle, sophisticated hands. And you'll see a little bit of this demonstration in one of our video demonstrations later today. Um, the Alexander teachers also help to improve habits of attention, reactivity, and breathing leading many teachers to describe our work as psychophysical. What are the benefits of the Alexander Technique for people living with Parkinson's? Improved functional patterns that promote optimal postural tone. Reduced low back pain and improved balance and gait. New learned skills, which can be applied consciously during physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech sessions, or exercise programs. These skills can be applied even if unable to engage in physical exercises. Greater self-management of physical symptoms during everyday activity including falls and freezing. You become more active and skilled partner in overall care. So let's look at our first demonstration. Um, the first one is on Phil and we're gonna see a little bit, I'll tell you a little bit about his journey. So Phil had had um, Parkinson's for nine years. He was 72, 72 years old 
when he was part of a research and trial group. Um, Phil at the time needed help with all of his ADLs, his activities for daily living. He needed help tying his shoes, going to the bathroom, the washroom, um, rolling out of bed and walking, as you'll see. And also he had freezing um, accidents as well, uh, or incidents. And he couldn't walk. And his wife said he had absolutely no smile. So in this video, we're going to look at a before and after. Okay, it, he worked on with Alexander for three years. And this is Phil. Let me tell you the story of Phil. I met him three years ago, almost exactly, as part of a research project. When I met him, he couldn't roll over. He couldn't go to the bathroom on his own. His wife quit her full-time job to care for him. He couldn't stand without falling over backwards. In three years, he's transformed. You can see he's transformed. The things that he can do are amazing. That's what this project is about. It's about taking and let's look at some of the key points on Phil's journey, okay? Some of his conditions, inability to walk. He had a shuffled gait and all over stiffness, as you can see here on in this right, uh, the picture on the right, you can see the stiffness within his body. And he also needed assistance for activities in his daily living, just like we spoke with earlier. So after three years of having the Alexander Technique lessons, um, he got his independence back. He had an improved walking in his gait. He also improved his balance. And he no longer needed assistance for his ADLs, his activities in daily living. And if you look on the far picture here, you can see that he had improved muscle tone. And Phil actually grew four inches from where he started. And amazing enough, Phil could drive again. So it was an absolute amazing journey that he had. And of course, his wife said he got his smile back. Let's look at another video demonstration. Uh, this is Harry going up on his toes with his Alexander Technique teacher guidance. Now we don't know much about Harry, but we do know from the video that Harry has a task to do. The task is to go up on his toes. He is very concerned about it. And from what he says previously, we understand that he actually never believed he would ever be able to go up on his toes. We will uh, watch how his reaction changes from anxiety to calmness. And please also notice how his attention changes and also notice his balance. So, how are you feeling about going up his toes? Oh, I'm uh, anxious. Why? You've done it before. I've done it before. <laughs> I just think about the space above me. We're going up. We're going up onto our toes. Just like that. For balanced? I'm for balanced, yes. As soon as we thought about being balanced, I, I ceased to be balanced. <laughs> Thinking about being balanced, it ceased to be balanced. So what's the least amount of mental effort it takes to be calm? And really smack down. Do you want to face the door and do it as well? So we get a sense of you side on. So don't forget the nose bobs down slightly. So you have length up the back of the neck. And then you release your head up. And back down. Now, we did obviously this the last lesson, but when I mentioned it, you were like, I can't go to my toes. When was the last time you'd got up into your toes or felt even that was a possibility? I don't know. It was some time before that, and I was all over the shop. Is it something you've been asked to do? Um, maybe as, as a test, as a test by physio, yes. Like, yeah, yes. yeah, and you struggled with it. Then. I struggled with it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. oh, fantastic. Lay back down. So you feel like your your balance has definitely improved. 
Yes, definitely. Oh, definitely. And thinking about going the space above was an, a difference to what I thought about it before. All I did before was to pinpoint something on the wall and say, I'm going to aim at that. Which is funny because you weren't trying to go towards the wall. Because <laughs> your actual one's going to go way. that way, not that way. <laughs> exactly. And, it's, and make it, exactly. You're going up. So when I've been practicing, I've actually done that because you did this. Points on Harry's journey. Well, the conditions were anxiety, or in his own words, I am anxious right at the beginning. Then stiffness, inability to stay on the toes, the way he explained it before, and looking at a point on the wall. That was his attention on a point on the wall. And what changed? What are the improvements? Well, first thing, he changed his reaction from anxiety to calmness. Then he improved trunk mobility and muscle tone during the movement. He improved balance while staying on the toes. And all thanks to improved attention, I am thinking about going up to the space above. Remember first he was thinking about looking at a point at the wall. Now he's thinking about going up to the space above. And now we'll do an Alexander mini arm movement with Shula. Okay. So uh, we can apply attention actually to any movement we do. And we will experiment today with a very simple arm movement and see how we can put our attention on the movement. Uh, what you will be doing, it will be just to move your arm sideways and put your arm back down, that's all. However, we will do it three times. And uh, right now, just don't do anything. Just take your time. Remember the support of the back of the chair behind you, the support of, this, of the floor underneath you. And all you do is you don't even get up of the chair. I'm the one who's getting up. All you do is bring your arm sideways and put it down. And that's all. Okay. Now, second time, what you will do, don't do anything yet. What you will do, you will put your attention on your fingertips. And when you will move your arm sideways, you will point with your fingertips toward an object on your side. It can be the wall on your side, a window, a picture on the wall, a plant, a desk, anything. So don't do anything yet. All you do, point with your fingertips. And again, don't do anything yet. The third time, again, you will move your arm sideways. You will point sideways with your fingertips. But this time, you will also put your attention on the space in front of you, behind you, around you and especially above you, the way Harry did. And so when you will be moving your arm sideways, don't, do, don't go yet. As you will be moving your arm sideways, you will think of the fingertips pointing sideways and of your whole body going up into the space above you. The, the head is leading up. It's all, it will be almost like your head is floating up into that space above. Are you ready? Okay, first time, arm sideways and put your arm down. Second time, arm sideways, fingertips pointing toward an object on your side and arm down. Third time, our same arm sideways, fingertips pointing toward this, an object on your side. And you are going into the space above you. You can think of the ceiling if you want. 
Your whole body is almost like growing up as a tree with your head, almost like floating up into the space above you and put your arm down. <clears throat> and now some of you might feel uneven, might feel like one shoulder got maybe a little lighter than the other one or one arm different than the other one. So just in order to feel even, we will do the other side as well. And first time, arm sideways, fingertips pointing. Sorry, put your arm down. Second time, arm sideways, and now the fingertips are pointing sideways toward an object on your side and put your arm down. And third time, arm sideways, fingertips pointing sideways, and you are going up into the space above you. You are kind of growing up like a tree. Your head is kind of floating up into the space above you. Remember the ceiling above your head. Remember the sky above me, the ceiling, and put your arm down. Thank you, everybody. Thank nice. you, Julie. Nice, Shula. So our last video demonstration is with Allison. Allison was 49 years old when she received her diagnosis. Um, her worst symptoms at the time um, were tremors and she had a challenge keeping herself mobile. Allison said at the time she could get now after having Alexander lessons that she can get herself out of a freeze in seconds. And she said people are absolutely amazed how she can go from violently shaking, shuffling and bent over and stuck to standing upright and walking with long strides. So as you watch the video, notice her, her habitual or typical movement when she would typically get out of bed, or she even says her off period. And then notice what she tells herself to get out of it. So let's see Allison's transformation as she is sharing tips on how she navigates Parkinson's um, with the Alexander technique while she's at a conference. And it's a Parkinson's conference. I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's for 13 years, and I've taken Alexander lessons for about nine. And my tip for that is my tip for, for living well with Parkinson's, because right now I'm very off, as you could probably tell, and I would like to walk like this. This is what I would like to walk with like when I get up. But because of the Alexander technique, I can remember to, to raise my head, and when I start to walk, I push off the back foot, and eventually my old gait takes over. And that's why I like Alexander technique, because I can get around. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's an incredible journey as well. So let's look at a few of Allison's key points on her journey. Um, her conditions before starting Alexander, she had difficulties walking, especially during her off period. She experienced a shuffle gait. She had intense tremors and she was definitely off balance. After having Alexander, her walking improved, her gait improved, and she also had reduced tremors. And you could see that she had an in, improved balance and body coordination as well. So remember during the video, she said she gives the language she needs to explain to her brain what is needed. And she was actually engaging in her Alexander Technique guidelines. And once she went by those guidelines, you'll notice, or you did notice, the change in her. Her thinking helped her rearrange herself so she could walk. She could choose how she was going to walk instead of going into an automatic or habitual pattern. Really a, um, a nice transformation there. So now Shula is going to lead us through a breathing activity. We are getting closer to the end of the presentation. And we would like to end with um, 
a breathing activity. Uh, extended breathing is known to help with the heart. It helps reduce heartbeats and is known to calm down the, in calming down the, the nervous system, especially extended exhalation. So the type of exhalation that we will do today it will be just a one minute or maybe two minutes um, activity uh, will be uh, the blowing out the candle exhalation. And what does it mean? You do not want to think of a birthday candle, right? You do not want to use full power trying to blow out that candle and and uh, creating compression in the neck and getting the head out of balance. What you want to do is extend the exhalation by just pursing your lip, lips, holding your finger in front of you like, like holding a candle. That's all. So let's start and I will guide you during, during this uh, breathing in a little bit of movement. Take a moment, make yourself comfortable, candle in front of you, purse your lips. And now the candle just moved a little bit sideways. You follow the candle with your eyes, your head is following your eyes and purse your lips. And now the candle came back to the middle. Eyes looking at the candle, purse your lips. And now the candle moved to the other side. Follow the candle, eyes leading the movement, head following the eyes. And now your finger is coming back to the middle, purse your lips one more time. And now Julie will break the movement for you and make it even a little slower so that you can follow your head movement. And then we will combine everything back together. Thank you, Shula. So as you're here, we're gonna think of, continue thinking of the head coming up, coming right up, coming up to the sky. We'll think of our sit bones sitting, releasing into the chair. So we have that head coming up and sit bones releasing to the chair. And if your feet can be on the floor, that would be great. Flat feet on the floor. So we're thinking up as we're thinking down with our hips and down with our feet on the floor. So as you're doing that, we're gonna gently look to the side. I'll have you go to your right side, eyes leading, and then we'll pause. And then next, we'll just release a breath. Continuing that thought of coming up, the head floating up as we come back to the center. Pause and release the breath. Continuing the thought of coming up as we're sitting down, head up and coming to the side. Leading with the eyes, we'll pause and release a breath. Continuing that thought of coming up as we come back to the center, head up, heels down and head up and sit bones down. Pause and release the breath. Now Shula is gonna put it all together for us. So now we are going to combine everything back together. And this time you can have the candle in front of you as your finger, or you can do it without a candle. You, can, you might think that the candle is, is, is uh, far away from you. Maybe it's, it's on a window in front of you. Maybe it's even beyond the, the, your house. 
Take a moment, make yourself comfortable, purse your lips, your eyes are smiling, and exhale. And now that candle, whether it's close by or far away, is moving to the side and you follow that candle, there's your lips. Now the candle is coming back to the center, there's your lips. The candle went to the other side and so is your eyes and head. Candle back to the center, breath back to the center. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, that was nice. One of my favorite exercises, Shuma. So it's always worth um, to know the science behind the different modalities, especially if you're not familiar with the modality. So Shula and I are gonna go through just a few, um, or just highlight a few of the science behind um, Alexander technique. The first one is with Candace Cox, and she's the one who did a lot of video work with her patients and students, um, like Phil that you saw earlier. And she was part of a trial group who documented um, many wonderful findings about the Alexander Technique. And she actually has a book out called um, Living Daily. It's the Alexander Technique um, for Parkinson's disease. And it's a wonderful book. Um, it includes stories on individuals. So you get to see how they are um, dealing in their, uh, their journey through Alexander Technique. And then you'll also see um, explanations exercises, a lot of exercises in here, and a long list of resources in the back in the bibliography um, there at the end of the book. Shula? Yeah, I will mention uh, three more uh, articles from this list. Let me start with number four with Tim uh, Cacciatori and his team. So Tim works with muscle tone, postural tone, um, what, which reminds me of a string player, a violin player, a guitar player. Uh, these musicians need to, to adjust their strings in such a way that the strings will not be too overstretched or too released. They need to be in the right tone to produce the right musical note, right? And so our body needs to be in the right tone. But this tone needs to be regulated. And so um, the study by uh, Cacciatore is about increased dynamic regulation of postural tone um, with training in the Alexander Technique. Now, next uh, article I will mention is number two and three by Rajal Cohen. She uh, works on a different aspect of the Alexander Technique, the aspect of the mind. Our mind affects our movement. And so, the name of her lab is the Mind Over Movement Lab. And the third article this, uh, is by uh, Chloe Stolibras, uh, number five and six. This is an earlier study. It was done on three groups. All three groups were on medication but only one group did uh, Alexander lesson, took Alexander lessons. All, there was a follow-up on all three groups for six months. It turned out that the groups that uh, took Alexander lesson reported better walking, improved coordination, improved balance, 
less stress, uh, better coping with their symptoms. And one very notable uh, difference between that group and the other groups was the fact that during those six months, the group that took Alexander lessons needed very little change in their medication. Usually medication increases with time. Uh, Parkinson's medication increases with time. But on that group that took Alexander lessons, uh, there was hardly any change as opposed to the other two groups that needed a higher dose. And just to kind of piggyback on what Shula just was talking about, and we found that to be true with Allison. In the nine years that she has had Alexander lessons, she has not had to increase her dosage at all. So Alexander technique and the medication are a really nice collaboration. Yeah, I really hope that there will be more research on this subject. I really, truly hope. Absolutely. So Shula and I would like to invite you to a Manage Parkinson's Symptoms class that we're going to be offering. It's currently, it's a two week class, um, but we hope to extend it um, with the intention to extend it to another five weeks. So it's a two week Alexander class adapted for people living with Parkinson's and their care partners, if they'd like. Now, just a little bit about the class. The class is educational and supportive. Um, if you have back pain or you wanna improve your balance and gait, um, this is the place to do it. Um, we'll also be working on gentle movement with special guidelines for daily living. And we'll actually give you um, a piece of paper that has some of these guidelines on it. So you can take it home and practice it between the classes. You will learn new skills for daily activities such as walking, turning, sitting, and standing. And all of this with the class format together with personal individual guidance. And what do I mean by that is typically when you're in a group with a lot of people, um, you don't get to have the hands one-on-one -on -one experience, but Shula and I will be offering the one-on-one -on -one experience throughout the class so you can kind of see what it's like to have a private lesson. So these classes will be held April 18th and also April 25th. And like I said, with the intention of having more classes right after that, um, it will be from 11 to 12 o'clock at the Felicia Mahood Multipurpose Center on Santa Monica Boulevard in Los Angeles. And that is actually just one block west of the 405 freeway. Feel free to call me if you'd like to register for the class. And if you can't make it to both classes, that's okay. We can have you come early to one of the classes and catch you up as much as we can. And um, Shula and I both work privately. Here is, um, you'll find our information in case you'd like to get in touch with us. Here's Shula's information, her email, her website, and, um, and her phone number. And then on the other side, you see mine as well, the website, the email, and the phone number. Shula and I would like to thank you for letting us be part of your Parkinson's journey. And also thank you for being pre proactive in your Parkinson's journey as well. I'd also like to thank PCLA for hosting this event today. Now, I know some of you may have questions, so Shula and I can stay and as long as we're able to answer some of your questions. Again, thank you so very much. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm sure there will be many questions. Um, I, I can vouch for the quality of their workshops. I was fortunate enough to participate in the, the workshop in Northridge. And you, I know you all experienced some weird, bizarre magic just now with even over Zoom. And in person, with the, the touch is really important. Um, it's, it's very much a, a 
human touch is a really important part of it. And they have, they're like magical healers that are amazing. So anyway, that's, that's my stump speech for them. They're awesome. But uh, my neck, moved so much more just in that little exercise like i have neck issues you know i have spinal stenosis and um and uh, it's just fascinating to me that by just the, that slow intentional focused movement can just make such an enormous difference and um can you talk a little bit about the science behind that uh, okay, I will mention Rajal Cohen. Uh, she has one of the studies is about uh, the question, what type of instructions do we give ourselves when we move? Do we tell ourselves, I'm supposed to try hard to be in good posture? Or can I tell myself, I am lightening up? What's the difference between the two types of instructions? How do we engage our mind as we move? This, it's a very important uh, difference. Uh, so she deals with this, yes. It's in the list. In my husband's hair, I am my husband's caregiver and I would love to take the class, but it will also be helpful. For, will it also be helpful for me? I had spine injury and since then back pain in walking on my lower back. Absolutely. The Alexander technique is applicable to all walks of life, all stages from even children. We work with them. And absolutely, you will learn as much as your husband learns, which is fantastic. Right. I will also mention a, a, a study that was published in the British, British Medical Journal on back pain. It was a, a huge um, research. About 600 people participated. It was all uh, regarding chronic back pain. Uh, another question. How will this work with a person who is now in Parkinson's dementia stage? Okay, I, I had the experience of working with a person very shortly, person with dementia, this is difficult. I have to say it's difficult because you do need to remember um, the instructions in order to practice them. So, but what can be done is, um, is just repeated work constantly with the hope that the body will remember. Um, but that's all I can say. Yes, because what we'll do, what we're doing is we're working with the motor system, right? And we're working with organizing that central control. So many times that does um, come to mind as we um, keep on visiting that movement of that primary control and that organization. But Shula does have a good point. But it, it certainly can come yeah. back to be more habitual. Yeah. Yeah, we, we cannot give a, a, a definite answer. Yeah, that's a tricky yes. situation for sure. Yes. Because we're, um, we're all individuals and everyone um, goes at their own individual pace. Right. And I think that my sense is that that is one of the key elements of, of the Alexander technique, that everything he slows down, that it's just, and by yeah. that slowness, that's what allows you to go right. deeper. Right. It, it, uh, it is essential for the learning process. Yes. Which is hard for us Westerners. <laughs> it was hard for me in the workshop, but boy, it was amazing what happened when I slowed down. Because I rushed, I was rushing there, and you know, and you're so, so, um, yeah. Um, Somebody had a question, how often should one meet with an Alexander Technique practitioner? I was curious about that. Like somebody like Allison, obviously she probably started at one level and probably didn't have to do it as frequently um, as things went on. But uh, what, what, is the, what would be the ideal situation there? 
So ideally, it would be great. So with Allison and also with Phil, what they did is they did five consecutive days, okay? And then they remeasured them. And the, the change was so phenomenal that everyone in the center just clapped because they could not believe the, the shift, the change, um, the interference that they went in front of Parkinson's. Um, and so ideally, yes, I would do anywhere from three to five um, in a row and then come back the next week and do anywhere from maybe, and again, it depends on the individual, where are they at? Um, right. So that's three to five days in a row, days in a row? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I will just um, make a comment here that even once a week is okay too, but the progress will be slower. Mm. Mm -hmm. And somebody wants to know how they can find a practitioner of this technique who's available for an individual instruction. And definitely you are, I know you both have private practices, correct? But if you don't lot local um, or you wanna try somebody different, there's a Alexander Technique uh, website where you can search for people, but obviously you want to find somebody who's trained in the Parkinson's element of that, which I think we're pretty fortunate to have people locally that are trained. I don't know. I, I don't know how widely. Uh, I don't know how, how many people who could, because a lot of people teach the Alexander Technique in art schools and things like that and don't necessarily go to where you, the level that you guys have gone to. Right. Well, um, um, Julie, what do you say? That, that person can send us an email and we will check what's the location. And, and according to this, we will, we might be able to find it. Yes, someone that specializes in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to add? But other things that you'd like to, that are people to, to be aware of? Julie, anything to add? Anything to add. Just as a takeaway, as you're sitting here, just allowing that softness to come into all of your joints. Okay, mm. Allow that softness to come in. And the more you practice that, then the more you will encompass it and adapt to it. Because Parkinson's, again, we it has a loud voice. And sometimes it's hard or it can be challenging to get in front of that voice to notice, okay, this is me and this is Parkinson's. Parkinson's is doing this to me and I am, this is who I am or where I want to be. So it's getting in between that voice. And one of the things you can do is practice your softening, softening in your joints, softening, allowing the head to float up, allowing your gaze that's really important to go on the horizon. That itself will allow you to come up. And what we, by coming up, what we're doing is we're just lengthening the system. We're not contracting. Remember, Parkinson's likes to take us down. So we want to lengthen. And the really great way to do that is by softening, softening our joints, our arms. And that's why we did that one exercise with the hands. And yeah. she was said, thinking of the space in front of us, in back of us, and and above us. I will. I will also um, um, say that uh, tonight, when you go to sleep, you can think of your arm. You can move your arm when you are in bed. You know, move your arm sideways. Put your attention on your fingertips, and then put your attention on the space above you, above your face, above your legs, above your ribs, above your neck, if you are on your back, you know? Just remember that we are one part of the whole environment. And um, go to sleep with these, these thoughts of space and softening, as Julie said, and arms moving sideways to get your shoulders wide and away from each other. Mm -hmm. And and also we'll have a better sleep this way. Mm -hmm. 
And if you find yourself being a little anxious, which happens to all of us, right? Um, practicing that, that blowing out the candle. Again, that will slow your heart rate and bring you back into the present moment. That's right. Breathing, extended exhalations, wonderful. Thank you, Shula and, and Julie, for a remarkable presentation. I got so much out of it in so many ways. And thank you all for joining us today. We have some great events coming up. You can join us this Sunday at 4 p.m. for our second annual Living Artistically with Parkinson's Poetry Jam. You'll hear readings by poets from the Parkinson's community. And if you have a poem to share, it's not too late to join us. You can reach out to us at sarah at pcla.org and you can join, join us on Sunday. It's at 4 p.m. Later this month, we're gonna have a free education event about palliative care and Parkinson's. And in May, we're gonna hear about the latest advances in deep brain stimulation and another session about mental health concerns in Parkinson's and how to boost our mood for maximum quality of life. Links to register for these events, as well as updates for all of our programs will be sent out to our email list. Today's event was made possible by our sponsors, Abbott, Boston Scientific, Kiowa Kirin and Supernus, and by you, by donating to BCLA, you can join us in our mission to improve the lives of the families in our community who are living with Parkinson's. PCLA is a nonprofit and all donations are tax deductible. If you enjoyed today's program, please consider donating at pcla.org or to help us continue to provide these amazing programs for free. And we are a little more than halfway through our Parkinson's Awareness Month fundraiser. Consider donating just, donating just $3 to help us reach our goal. Seriously, we're raising $3,000 in 30 days and you can toss your $30 into the bucket and help us get there. As always, reach out to us with questions at info at pcla.org. We love hearing from you or by phone at 310-880-3143. Thank you everyone so much.